you know, the Singapore of my time, that is my childhood, teenage days, uh, was one where life moves slowly, leisurely, no rush, uh, no tall buildings to terrify oneself. But in the days to come, when you have modern skyscrapers, people are rushing, life becomes quite impersonal, uh, people do not sit back to reflect on life itself. When I was a kid, these were the main types of buildings that you would see. They are shop houses, two to three stories in height. Usually there are shops on the ground floor and the families of the shopkeepers live on the first or the second floor. And their families were large, could be relatives of theirs um, who work with them as their employees and they live on the upper floors. These are things which we will miss, I'm quite sure, because we city planners have to accept the fact that they belong to a past era. And uh, that's something which my kids may not see at all. It's something which I have some sentimental attachment for. I'm used to seeing them, lived in them, uh, grew up in them. And, but they are out of place when today uh, the trend is for tall buildings, uh, offices, shops, and modern surroundings, uh, all rearing skywards. Twenty years ago, when Chua Pen Chai was a child, Singapore had a population of barely one million. Today, Peng Chai is senior planner in the government's state and city planning department, and he lives in a city of two million. He is planning a Singapore of four million people, twice as many inhabitants before the end of the century. To find room for that many people in an already overcrowded island, some of the older parts of the city must go. Today, the only way that Singapore can grow is up. You know, Singapore is an island, only about 210 square miles in area. The built-up area is about uh, 40 square miles. Uh, and within this 40 square miles, within this 20% uh, of the land area of Singapore, there live about 80% of the population. Ta 
Đi vào lục tôn mà Singapore was founded in 1819, so it has a very comparatively short history. Originally populated by the indigenous Malays, but with the arrival of the founder, Sir Stanford Raffles, the Chinese began to move in. Uh, a lot of them started as little traders. Some of them prospered, some of them didn't, uh, but today, 75% of the population of Singapore is Chinese. The Indian population came principally as a result of the British setting up rubber estates and today we have the Chinese as the uh, principal ethnic group uh, followed by the Malays and then the Indians. Uh, Singapore has been living on trade for a long time and uh, this harbour of ours around here is rated to be third or fourth largest in the world. We therefore have to make sure that the development of the harbour is not constricted in any way, that it continues to provide employment. Uh, another means of uh, looking after job op opportunities in the future is the provision of uh, lands for industrial development. The biggest of this is Jurong here, where we have made the lands available uh, and government is also coming out to share with uh, private enterprise in terms of capital to make sure that the industries are sufficiently attracted to Juro. A further economic problem which uh, has cropped up of late is the withdrawal or the pull out of the British forces. Uh, we have estimated that the British military bases account for about a fifth of our national income. This will leave an economic vacuum behind, as well as a military and a political one. And when they move out, we will have to make sure that uh, the problems created by their withdrawal are adequately looked after. And both necessary to living conditions and uh, uh, jobs or work uh, is the question of transportation. And on this aspect, we are thinking of uh, developing a mass transit line running from east to west, from east to the west, because the development here is very intensive and the feasibility of providing a mass transit line is very attractive. Which would be well related to this first approach road would be well related to that and would provide what seems to be a reasonable sort of focus. Now then, I can argue a little more at length about that, but briefly to go further on with the argument, it seems to me that in a sort of more an aesthetic design sense that there are tremendous opportunities in this area to make something fine of the Singapore of the future. Um, there's really a gap the state and city planning project is a United Nations assisted project on all sorts of planning problems, traffic, land use, regional planning and urban renewal. Uh, in time to come there should be at least 10 UN consultants in Singapore and these will be matched by about 24 to 25 local professional officers. Development in Singapore proceeds in words, at a very rapid rate as I say, so that there is need to be able to consider a series of alternatives uh, and for that more expertise is necessary, uh, more minds to bear on these problems because development must take place. We are up on similar lines in the sense that uh, 
when dealing with a central area that is uh, as mixed up as the one that we have in Singapore, except for the major areas which you have identified, that is the business center, the hub center, the open space center, one affects the other. You know, so somewhere along the line there must be some basis whereby we could perhaps uh, suggest ways and means to get this thing going. As a small island, you are subjected to more uh, political influences. You have uh, the formation of Malaysia and then after that confrontation, one or two years after that, the break off uh, between Singapore and uh, Malaysia. And then you have the Vietnam's uh, position getting worse and you have the Hong Kong troubles. These all have a very strong impact uh, on the way we have to look at things. And our need for investment is much more desperate than uh, cities elsewhere in Western countries. Whenever a prospective developer comes and says, I've already owned this land, or it is partly through purchasing this land cheaper than usual that I insist on developing this land, we sometimes have to accommodate because we not only want investment, we want it to be invested quickly. Kalang Basin, for example, is a major reclamation scheme. Kalang Basin was a swamp when I was a child. The place was very insanitary uh, near the city, fairly valuable land, underutilized, very close to an industrial area. And that is one of the reasons why uh, a lot of this reclaimed land will be used for industrial purposes as an extension of the existing industrial development here. Uh, you know, during my childhood days, I used to fish around there uh, in company with about 20 or little children, catching these uh, little fishes with our own bare hands. Today, the swamp has gone, the earth has come to fill it, the earth has come from uh, Tuapayo. Tuapayo is the largest public housing estate in Singapore. The rate of public housing construction attracts a lot of attention because we figure it works out to one flat every 45 minutes. Everywhere you still see these Chinese flags. You know, they are one of the ways that uh, Tradition rears its head up, as it were. The people just wouldn't trust a washing machine uh, to clean the clothes as well as their own personal hands. We spend a lot of money raising down slum areas, replacing them with tall modern buildings. Uh, but it's not as simple as saying a place is a slum uh, it's a fire hazard, it's insanitary, the people should not be subjected to these conditions of living and therefore we replace it with uh, buildings with modern amenities. Uh, we have also to look behind uh, the lives of these people as it were, to find out what they like, what they aspire for in life, what are their values. These are the things uh, that are just as important as uh, the surroundings uh, the physical outward relationship between a human being and his house or his toilet or whatever playground there is. And so when we replan their lives, and to a certain extent we do so, we must understand them better. And uh, in Singapore in particular, uh, there are people belonging to different generations, people belonging to different races, uh, and if one is not careful, one can very easily overlook uh, the fact that a person belonging to another generation comes from a different school, uh, medium of school instruction, comes from a different race, is likely to look at life differently. And uh, the planner, if he's not careful, is imposing his own values upon a situation. This is where I would come to the subject of uh, People's Park. People's Park has been a traditional shopping centre for a long time. It is a great center for bargain goods, particularly for the poorer sections of the community 
goods there are generally much cheaper than elsewhere so that people from the suburbs also come down to shop uh, not only just to shop but to uh, feel the way of life of the past as it were We conducted a two-day survey at People's Park and what we have asked our workers to do is to stop the customers, uh, to politely explain the object of our interview and to ask them a total of about 11 questions. And from these questions, uh, we hope to find out things such as uh, how many people visit People's Park on a typical weekday, on a typical weekend. What are the sort of goods they buy? Why do they go to People's Park to buy those goods? Things like that, which will help us understand the special attraction of People's Park to its customers. How often do you shop at People's Park for food? For food nearly daily. Daily, yeah? What about clothing? Clothing not necessary here. Not necessary. Textiles? Not necessary. No. What about others? Like uh, uh, this, cooking uh, utensils? By, uh, you see, in case of actually cheap materials like no, uh, these uh, iron wares, yeah. iron wares. Would you consider uh, buying it here then? Buy it here cheaper. Yeah. 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 那么还有啊，还有，你不要问题，你不要怕了，一下就完了。没有空了，哎，不要这样，他走了。不要一般了，不好意思。呃， what do you generally buy here? You come here for food? No, earrings. Uh, earrings then? Yeah. What about uh? Clothing. Clothing, yeah. What about uh, you know, like uh, textiles, you know, material. For the making of clothes, you know, dresses. That, that depends what that, I want to make that I Yeah, but, but do you buy generally kind of, those, those are the main items you come here Sometimes, right? Sometimes, yeah. Um, what about other things, you know, like uh, services, you come to the beauty parlor, parlor? Do you have a couple of beauty parlors here? Do you generally come here? No. Uh, what about the cosmetics? Do you buy cosmetics here? Yeah. Um, yeah. Uh, you buy here? Yeah. You buy here? You buy here? You buy it is of great interest to us to find out the reaction of the people who have been patronizing People's Park for many, many years. Because without the answers to what may appear to be silly questions, uh, we may be planning on false assumptions and that is a very dangerous thing to do. People's Park is going to be redeveloped. In fact, a tall building block has been erected by the side of People's Park with this object in mind to relocate the stall holders occupying land which is required for redevelopment by private enterprise. So we are very keen in exploring how the uh, stall holders are affected from having to be relocated. Specifically, in terms of the business sector, whether they will miss People's Park in its present form, whether the businesses in People's Park will 
be seriously, if at all, affected by this redevelopment. In terms of uh, income, we may have to treat the answers with some reservation because a lot of these stallholders do not pay income tax uh, and so we expect a certain amount of reluctance on their part to give accurate answers as to uh, the amount of income per month or per year. The answers derived from this survey will enable us to appreciate better uh, the wishes, the feelings, the hardships, if there are hardships of people who are affected by redevelopment. I'm moving my restaurant to the new building, but conditions won't be the same. Will business be better? No, definitely not. Here I'm right in the middle of a busy intersection. I get enough customers so that I can sell a plate of meat and rice for only 50 cents. In the new building, I'll have to charge much more than that. Well, why don't you tell your customers that you're moving and suggest you charge the same prices as before? Because I can't. In the new building, I'll have a higher rent and bigger gas and electric bills to pay, and the more I have to raise my prices, the fewer customers will come. Uh, speaking lastly for myself, I will certainly miss People's Park as an eating centre. The People's Park uh, is able somehow or other to supply food that other areas are unable to supply. So this is one benefit which not only myself but my office colleagues will miss. The old people's park is gone. It had to go. The unyielding need to modernize Singapore made it inevitable. I think that the uh, older folk, particularly, uh, will miss People's Park and its conglomeration of hawker stalls and stall holders. But even before the paint was dry on the new building, the first tenants moved in. Will the customers come as before? The surveys taken by the city planners hold the answer. If the spirit of the old people's park can be relocated as well, the answer is yes. Look, you have plenty of young city planners in Singapore. Why do you feel the need for United Nations assistance? We have uh, uh, very great potential. I'm trying to speak with as much modesty as I can master. Uh, I think by Southeast Asian standards, uh, 
the potential in the young Singapore planners is great. Uh, 60 to 70 percent of them are duly qualified. However, we are all very young. We may have the academic training. Uh, we may have been fortunate enough to be trained at uh, uh, reputable planning schools, uh, but we haven't had very useful experience as yet. Most of us have just graduated. And this is where uh, experts are very useful. They not only have experience, they have experience in their specialist fields, and if they can transfer on this knowledge of theirs, additional to what we have acquired in the planning schools, uh, at the end of four years, as uh, one UN expert himself has predicted, we will have uh, a core of extremely useful planners to work in Singapore and to help Singapore get on without further United Nations aid in this particular field.